All right, so we're back at our CSS faux or fake column layout. Um, if you didn't see the earlier video, so you don't know quite how we got here, probably would be worth taking a look at that. So we've got our fake column set up. And the only thing I want to do now, again, should be fairly simple. You'd think this would be, uh, you know, kind of a no-brainer, but it's not, again, quite not quite as simple as you might think. So the only thing I need to do right here is it's pretty hard to read what I've got here. Every, all the type is bumping right up against the edge of the columns. It's bumping up against the other text in each of these columns. Um, looks bad, hard to read, uh, so we just need to give it a little space, a little air to make it a little more comfortable in terms of reading. Very easy way to do this is to add padding. Um, I've tried this before. I've figured out that 9 pixels in this case of padding looks pretty good. So all we're going to do is go here. So here's our divs that create these three columns, Content L, Content C, Content R. You can see they're all floated to the left. They're all 320 pixels wide. So 320 plus 320 plus 320 is 960, which is the width of our wrapper. So all we need to do then is add some padding. Um, again, I'm going to do this the simplest possible way. I'm not going to worry about left, right, top, bottom. I'm just going to do nine pixels of padding in each column. And as I said, I've looked at nine. Nine looks pretty good. Pretty good. So we're going to just add nine pixels to all of these. Save it. And let's look at our padding, see if that did what we're hoping for. Whoops. All right, so here's the problem. Rather than giving us this nice 9 pixel padding around all of the sides like I had hoped somehow it's kinda of knocked everything out of whack so our faux columns no longer look uh, the way we would like them to and in fact the float isn't really doing what we wanted because the idea is this column should be up alongside of that one so why well, in order to know what's happening here, we have to look at the CSS box model. Um, I've gone to w3schools.com, which, if you haven't yet seen this, is a great, great resource for tutorials on HTML, CSS, JavaScript, all sorts of things. Uh, you can see here XML, ASP, PHP, and even more. Um, I've gone to the CSS tutorial section and we're going to go down here to where it says CSS box model and just take a look at what the heck the CSS box model is. So, CSS box model is essentially a box that wraps around HTML elements and it consists of all these things. So here's the, here's the key to what's happening. When we set the width on that column, that div, uh, we're setting the width of the content. So the box model starts with the content. So here it is, content, and we've set it to be 320 pixels wide, if you remember, remember because 320 plus 320 plus 320 is 960, the width of our wrapper, the width that I want the page to be. Uh, so there's our 320, and then if you recall, what I did is I added 9 pixels of padding. So looking at the box model, you'll see where the problem came in. 320 plus 9 over here, 329, plus 9 over here, 338. So we've now got that element at 338 wide, and 338 plus 338 plus 338. So in fact, here's what we have, 338, 338, and that knocks the third one down below 338. So it's creating this definitely screwed up version. So to fix it, if you haven't already figured this out as I've been talking about it, pretty straightforward. We know that the padding here of 9 pixels, which is on each side, means that we've added 18 pixels to the width of that element. So in order for there to be three of them that line up and create 960 total, we have to subtract 9 plus 9 which is 18, from the 320. So that now becomes 302. We're going to subtract our padding from this one, 302, and we're going to subtract our 
18 pixel total pixels of padding from this one 302 so there we go there we go all right so there it is we're pretty much done now we we could obviously tweak this and you might not necessarily like the amount of padding you might make want to make more in fact let's just do real quick just to show again how this works let's just add make this nice round 10 pixels that now becomes a nice round 300 because I have to now subtract 20 from it and in this case I know that these are all identical the same width they're just floating and they have padding so probably the quickest and easiest way for me to do this is copy one paste it be sure if you're going to do this that everything is identical because if each of those columns had some slight differences then uh, this could cause a problem all right so now I've got nice round numbers uh, it gives me a tiny bit more padding, um, maybe looks a little bit better. Um, so for the time being, I'm happy. So there you have it. Uh, we started with the CSS faux column approach in the first video. In this video, we adjusted the padding to make it look a little bit uh, cleaner, a little bit easier to read by creating some space around it and for the time being we're just going to leave it at this and once again so you remember this is all based on an article by Dan Cederholm that was in a list apart um, you can search for it on a list apart.com it's called faux columns f-a-u-x faux meaning uh, fake in French I think alright that's it for now